Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt read upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Again one must face reality. It shall not come nigh thee. It's not a promise that anyone can claim in this age. It may come nigh thee and it may come nigh, enough to put you in the coffin. Many Christians died before they were 15 years old, and 10,000 certainly didn't fall at their side. Not even all the saints in the tribulation can claim the promise, for many of them are beheaded, Revelation chapter 20 verse 4, and, and some of them are eaten, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 13. Directly the passage goes on the Lord Jesus Christ, see verse 11. He is the one who treats on the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, verse 13. The direct doctrinal claim is Christ's. Of course, there is much to be said here devotionally. For example, we may say that our eyes will behold the reward of the wicked. Verse 8. For we will be part of the troops that follow the Lord Jesus Christ in the combat at Armageddon. See Revelation chapter 19 and Isaiah chapter 63. No evil will ever befall us again after the rapture and no plague will ever affect us again. We will be delivered, verse 14. We will be set on high, verse 14. God certainly is with us now in all trouble, verse 15. We certainly will be honored, John chapter 5, verse 44, chapter 12, verse 26, and our long life, verse 16, will last as long as God's life lasts, lasts. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 6 and 8. If you are saved, you, are, you can put your name in the psalm. Chapter 91, verses 14 to 16, where it says he or him. Glory. The problem is this. In verse 2, the I is the psalmist, but the T in the next verse 3 will have to be the Lord Jesus if we are to follow through the ver to verses 12 and 13. When we get to verse 9, it would appear that the psalmist is talking to Jesus Christ and saying, because you have put your faith in the same God that I, that I have put my faith in, there shall no evil befall thee. This is the sense, although the commentators cannot imagine it. A little reading in the Holy Bible will stimulate one's imagination in such matters. For example, in Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 to 2, Jesus Christ gives a personal word of testimony, but immediately in verse 5, me is no longer Christ, it's Israel. Verse 4, switched again, it's Isaiah, speaking for Israel. Verse 5, this is God the Father speaking, and now, said the Lord, the me is Jesus Christ again, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Note especially the last seven words. Time after time in the Old Testament, the Lord Jesus is spoken of as a man praying to God, putting his trust in God, hiding in God, confiding in God, and seeking God's protection, shelter, defense, and blessing. This is the case in Psalm chapter 91, verse 9. For, she, she, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, verse 11. The verses quoted in, of the Jesus Christ by the devil 
Matthew chapter 4 verse 6, and the devil certainly knows the Bible better than any Greek or Hebrew scholar. Observe that Satan is a charismatic Catholic Campbellite when it comes to quoting the scripture. Like old mother Eve, there are certain words in the Bible he doesn't care to quote because they mess up with his trying to prove. Eve omits freely, as you can see. The Roman Catholics, all the priests, bishops, popes, archbishops and cardinals uh, cite Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 to prove that the true church of Jesus Christ is founded on Peter, but they tact tactfully omit verse 23, which tells you that Peter is Satan, convenient omission, we can say. The water dogs, Campbellites, love to quote Mark chapter 16 verse 16 and 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21, but they have a terrible time quoting either verse as it's written. They never quote the second clause in Mark chapter 16 verse 16 and they always omit the like figure when citing 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21. In this, is this accidental? We throw not Luke chapter 17 verse 9. The charismatics Gorman, Hagin, Copeland, Hickey, Swaggart, Coe, Allen, Ewing, Roberts, Osborne, etc., etc., Ladron Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4, every time they opened their mouths but then forgot to cite the verses 8 and 11, which tell you that there are no unknown tongues in the entire chapter. Again, they will quote 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14, but the word unfruitful was so irritating that the RSV and NIV converted the word spirit to mind to line up with, with the Living Bible, which said, I don't know what I'm saying. Kenneth Taylor rewrote the verse so it would teach what the charismatic wanted it to teach. The King James doesn't say what they teach. The passage was talking about the man's understanding of what he prayed, not bearing any fruit because the man who heard it couldn't understand it. See verse 16. Moral. Every translation since 1800 designed to propagate one or more falsehood that the AV will not support. Christ's ways, verse 11, were God's ways. See Hebrews chapter 10, verses 7 to 9. Everything Satan tempted him to do, he is required to do by Scripture, and will do at the right time. But Matthew chapter 1 to 4 wasn't the right time. The right time for all three actions in Revelation is Revelation chapter 12 verse 6, chapter 11 verse 15, and chapter 19 verse 11. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou tremble under feet, verse 13. Look out, Satan quotes verses 11 and 12 to Jesus Christ because of a personal reference to himself in the next verse, the dragon. But the head of the New King James Committee has assured us that there are no such things as dragons. They are suckers or serpents in many different kind of Bible translations, which are willfully ignorant of when translating their Bibles different way than it should be in the AV 1611. But the dragon is... is uh, what do you think, Quest what? It's a dragon. He is a red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 to 4. And he is described in detail in Job chapter 41. This dragon was a cherub, but he now appears as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. One day he will show up on this earth as a man. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 10. And 16. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. This man will be trampled on literally. Isaiah chapter 63, verses 1 to 6, because he is the seed of the serpent. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, who must have his head crushed. See Psalm chapter 68, verse 21, and Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 13. 
The only typology in the passage was the fact that wild beasts, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32, Mark chapter 1, verse 13, are a reference to demonic powers. Thus the adder and the young lion will match the devil's deputies, Revelation chapter 17, verse 12 and 16, who will carry out his work in the tribulation, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 and 39. The Hebrew word for dragon is tannin, as found in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 33, Psalm chapter 74, verse 13, Psalm chapter 148, verse 7, Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1, and chapter 51, verse 9, and Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 34. All that remains, verses 14 to 16, is plain. With reference to the one who will trample the dragon underfoot, it may be said that God gave him a name above every name to match verse 14. He is delivered from death, hell, and the grave, as well as Satan, to fulfill verse 14. God answers him, delivers him, and honors him. God grants him the eternal life that he promised him before the world began. Note that all the references are future. This brings up an interesting question to ask everywhere. Simply, what do you want in the future? Long life? Here it is. Good health? Here it is. Help in time of trouble? Here it is. Promotion and success? Here it is. My God shall supply all you need. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. What is missing from Psalm chapter 91 verses 14 to 16? Nothing. A man is a blank fool to reject Jesus Christ, and the more brains and money he has, the bigger a fool he is.